And now, David will give us our scripture for today. Today's scripture is from Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, by means of reasonable service. Do not imitate the way of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may discern what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace which is given to me, to all of you, not to think of yourselves beyond what you ought to think, but to think soberly. Every man according to the measure of faith which God has distributed to him. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, some have the gift of prophecy according to the measure of faith. Some have the gift of ministration in their ministry, and some of teaching in their doctrine. Some of consolation in consoling. He that gives, let him do it with sincerity. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let not your love be deceitful. Abhor that which is evil. Hold fast, hold fast to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing constantly in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to, given to hospitality. Bless them who persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them who rejoice, and weep with them who weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not vain glory, but associate with those who are humble. Be not wise in your own conceits. Compens recompense to no man evil for evil, but be diligent to do good things before the presence of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather restrain your wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will execute justice for you, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And now Reverend Macaulay will give us our lesson sermon. Thank you, David. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. This morning, I want to talk about learning. Many of us went to school and learned whatever we were taught. And when school was over, we thought learning was over. By the time we graduated, we thought, or we may have been operating under the mistaken impression, that we had learned all we needed to know to get us through life. For many of us, much to our dismay, once we got out into the real world, we learned that our real learning was just beginning. For example, when we took on a new job, we found that we had to learn new procedures, new ways of doing things. We had new machines to learn to operate. In fact, just learning to use the phone in the office presented new challenges. Of course, not only did we have to learn new skills and procedures at work, but also we had to learn how to make our homes. We had to teach ourselves to cook or find dinner every night after work. We had to learn to do laundry, to keep our home supplied and clean, and if we had a house, well, we had to learn about gardening, watering, mowing the lawn, taking care of the plumbing, heating and cooling and electrical systems, sound systems, computer systems, and the list goes on. Now, many of these problems are solved by calling someone to fix the problem. But often, in many cases, we're on our own, either because of limited finances or just because we enjoy a good challenge. I suppose the greatest challenge of all is bringing up children. They don't come with a manual. And they present all kinds of challenges, most of which are probably not, we are probably not prepared to manage. And many of the skills needed to be parents aren't taught in school. The point of all this is to say that what we learn in school is how to learn. We study a foreign language, 
and try to glean as much out of it as we can so that we understand what it takes to learn a foreign language. We know that we have to learn the various tenses of verbs so we can talk in the past, present, and future. We know that we have to spend some time on vocabulary and that there will be words that are confusing because two words can sound identical and have totally different meanings. Or we know that words, two words can sound entirely different yet mean the same thing. We know that two words can sound almost identical, yet the addition of one innocent letter can make a very reasonable statement into a profane one. The fact is, we never stop learning. What do we do when we learn? We transform our mind. We change from a being without knowledge to a being with knowledge. One by one, we add our talents to our talent collection so that ultimately we can do a variety of things. A good example of this is in relation to computers. Those who have been involved from the very beginning remember Fortran, Fortran programming language Cornell, BASIC and quite a few variations thereof, DOS and all its iterations, Windows BASIC 3.0, Windows 95, 98, NT, Millennium, XP, Vista, and now there's i7. Every iteration having its own peculiar set of rules and procedures for accomplishing various tasks. The only thing I can predict with certainty is that there will be many more versions of Windows that we will all get a chance to learn from now on. If you're not one of those who struggled through the various iterations of DOS or, and or Windows, an even better example might be reading Bible verses. When I was in Sunday school, I recall having memorized the 23rd Psalm, as well as Psalm 100. Just to re refresh your mind, these are the verses I learned from the King James Version of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As a child, I really didn't have any idea what it meant to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So the idea of God's presence in my life didn't mean much to me, nor did the idea that his rod and his staff could comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies it meant little or nothing to me either at the time. However, at various times in my life, I've taken a look at these verses, and the meanings seem to have changed because I've changed. I've added new experiences, gone to different countries to see how other people live, what they eat, how they make a living. And as I've gotten older and more experiences, the verses have taken on new meaning. The same holds true with the courses that Dr. Bissell wrote. I've gone through the basic eight courses in the past 25 years and read through them many times.